Well, first of all, a clarification. We we picked this name very cleverly by Ben before our government started shooting objects from the sky. <laughs> um, but we're, we're sticking with it. So we're Martian. And I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit about fair models, okay? And, and so we want to, um, first of all, dispel uh, two misconceptions. Uh, one is that uh, fair principles apply only to data. Uh, fair principles apply also to the models and the workflows that are used to generate, manipulate, and analyze data. That's an important aspect of uh, what we're trying to do. The second misconception is that this thing about data is for computational geeks and not for experimentalists. And of course, that's not the case. And so these workflows that connect inputs and outputs is what we use, are what we use to analyze experimental data. And uh, of course, there's computational workflows as well, whether it's machine learning or physics-based simulations. We believe that all of these uh, workflows and models need to be uh, made fair. Uh, to accelerate innovation. This is particularly important and timely in the area of machine learning, as we've seen for the last three days. There's an explosion in the number of models that are being developed and uh, the, the number of uh, papers that get published. And it has been estimated that you, if you were to stack all of these papers, uh, the front would move faster than the speed of light and we have been assured that that's uh, not a problem. It doesn't violate the relativity, the theory of relativity because they carry no information. And, and, and so uh, the reason is that we have to do better, right? So we, when we publish these papers, we have to ask ourselves, is the model findable and accessible? Um, if I can get access to say the Jupyter notebooks, will I be able to run it? Uh, library compatibility, you know, if you try to reproduce a paper from three years ago, it's a tall order and we spend a lot of time doing that. Um, is the associated data available and accessible? And can I reasonably use the model uh, for other purposes as opposed to one model for one paper? So this, this working group is, uh, we've been thinking about this and, and we want to bring the community to, together uh, to address the challenges in our field in uh, that would uh, require, uh, would, would allow us to make these models fair. And so I'll give you some examples of the type of things that we're doing. If you think about a, a workflow, uh, whether it's experimental or computational machine learning as a uh, something that connects inputs and outputs, uh, how can we declare inputs and outputs in a meaningful way uh, so that they can be, the model can be reused. Um, how would do we publish these models and give them uh, permanent uh, identifiers? How can we make these outputs and inputs or requirements and services queryable so the models can be, uh, the models are discoverable or the work for workflows are discoverable? How do we containerize them? So uh, they will run exactly the same way year after year. And how can we make the results of these models automatically available in uh, a fair database? So, so these are the type of questions that we're uh, trying to address. And we've organized our work in terms of three goals that we'd like to bring the community to answer. And uh, they relate to what I was saying a minute ago. The first one is, how do we define metadata and standards so that the functions, workflows, and models um, enable cross-service and uh, reuse in material science? Um, how can we coordinate efforts to add guardrails to the models so that we very clearly define the requirements and the service, the domain of applicability? As you know, most of these codes uh, do not do any sort of check, uh, checking of the inputs uh, before they're executed. And, uh, and can we address those? 
And can we promote model containerization so that we can um, reuse the models, run it, run them, but also uh, maybe move the model where the data is in cases where the uh, data is uh, very large. Um, so the two of the PIs are kind of leading this effort. Uh, it's Ben Blasic and myself, and we have two hybrid hybrid events planned. Uh, one uh, at Purdue, but it could be at a partner institution hosted by NanoHub, and uh, another one uh, at Argonne National Lab uh, and the uh, APS. And uh, we're more than interested in um, reaching, uh, in listening to the community and uh, encouraging um, volunteers and uh, folks who want to help and contribute to these events. 